What's up, nerds, and welcome to episode. Say what's up, nerds. <sighs> ooh, ooh. Welcome to episode 58 of Unqualified Game Chat. I am your host, Azara Lopez. And with me today is uh, Mr. Haircut. Look at that. Look at him walking down the the sidewalk, shining bright like a diamond. Oh, oh stop. Spencer, the legacy. Hello. My haircut makes up for me not shaving because my basement is uh, being is, is in trouble. And my razor is in the bathroom basement and I can't get in there. So forgive the neck beard. Mm. The haircut makes up for it. You have to go all the way to the basement for your bathroom. Well, typically I live in the basement, <gasps> um, but there was a big leak and I can't live there right now. Can you explain to people that in Canada basements are essentially just another part of the house? It's not that you live in like a rickety basement. Oh yeah. No, it's a, it's essentially just like, the other half of the house is yeah, in the basement. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, that, it's totally normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch any yeah. uh angry video game nerd episode. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's not, like I don't live in like a concrete walled like mm, like prison. Under, undercroft prison. Yeah. With I live uh, in like a, a nice insulated carpet floored drywalled uh nice it's basically the exact same as the upper floor but like windows aren't there so do you feel uh, pers- do you feel personally attacked when people say uh basement dweller i mean they got a point they got a point <laughs> I, am, I am dwelling in a basement they got me and there I, I do play video games you know it's fucked up but you got me um okay um so and the like that's so obviously because i live downstairs the bathroom downstairs is the one i use the most so that's where all my stuff is. And uh, it's currently blocked because we had to move everything in the basement. And so, so again, forgive the neck beard um, and the, all this before you rag on me about my beard again. Hey, 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 we don't rag here. You rag like one episode we, ago. We don't do that. We don't oh, yeah, do that. Don't. I need this to see your podcast. I need to see the receipts. Give me the receipts. They're on YouTube. <laughs> no, not good enough. Not, <laughs> not good for enough. long. I'm going to George Lucas them. Yeah. <laughs> um, this week, uh, this past week for, for, for me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like things, things in life just, just uh, kind of suck sometimes. The, life the, ebbs and flows. The world goes through all these terrible, we have, we got, uh, what is it? Um, greenhouse stuff going on the the, the oh, God, polar so bears stuff greenhouse stuff you the, know the polar bears are moving around and uh people are dying children are crying people are dying and children are definitely crying politicians are lying too and then i just feel like a terrible person because i'm sad that sometimes yeah i live alone and sometimes i'm a little lonely you got Jody and Cooper. Those are my pets. Cooper yeah. is my dog. Jody is my my cat. Yeah. For, for for listeners, and that's that's the silly thing is that mm-hmm. now I need to put my life into perspective. You know, I'm yeah. I I I went inward, and now I'm going going outward again. But would you rather be lonely or live with your parents again? Oh shit, dude! I'd rather live with my. Parents. <laughs> I'd rather someone that's pay not, my bills. <laughs> that's fair. No, but you're paying for rent. Oh, am I paying less than I'm paying now? You're paying the same, so you're not hmm. lonely because there's people. But it's your parents, so they'll ask you to do stuff. I think what had happened is that I lived with roommates up until last October, all my life. So this oh, is yeah. 32 years of living with roommates, mm-hmm. and then I and then I go to living by myself, and there's just some days where I just. I make a, uh, I make an oven pizza and there's nobody there to eat the other half, you know, and it oh, really, that's upsetting. Yeah. And then I have to eat it. <laughs> yeah. That's the course of action. You have to sometimes I'll, have... and you can't save oven pizza for like the next day. You got to eat it then. Yeah, or it's not great. The next day it's not going to, it's not going to last the night. Even if you put it in, you'll the... be like, 
I have that in the fridge. And then this, the rest is history. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I, I, on the other hand, thrive living alone. When I, mm. when I went to one of the universities I went to, I lived on my own in a dorm. I didn't know my neighbor's name. I was completely just, ah, I have 18 hours plus per day to just do work and reviews. So, but I imagine if you're used to a lot of people, yeah. or at least some form of companionship, um, you're not, you know, you're not on the Sigma grind set. Like, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, where uh, you're married to the job like I am. Well, oh, I, yeah. I wish I was. I wish I was. Uh, well, I, I guess I am kind of married to the job. Feels like an everyday thing. This week especially has been re re a lot of video reviews and a lot of editing. And yeah, it's been it's been an everyday thing. Typically, I'll take what I'll do is I'll record Noisy Newsweek on Friday, uh, like mornings. Yeah. And then I'll take the rest of the day off. And mm -hmm. then so Friday, Saturday act as my weekend, but Sunday I'm back to doing the videos, but yeah. I, I, I have to use those days to either play games to play like 12 hours of a video game and then get fucking hella drunk. <laughs> that does happen a lot for the viewers. That's pretty common. Yeah. Uh, so I'll play 12 hours of a video game, get a hella drunk and then wake up the next day and start working on a, a video. Uh, hell drunk start yelling abrasive comments at people and yeah almost get shot and almost almost die not at the same time though no, like, no, no, that no. was unprompted no yes, 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 yes i did not yell no at the people no um but no i, f I feel that i uh i don't remember what weekends i like oh I, shit i well i mean here's the yeah. thing um i love doing games journalism i love writing about games and playing games so I don't really need a big divider between, oh, I'm playing this for work and mm. oh, I'm playing this for fun. Like I can play a work game throughout the weekend and just be like, oh, I'm playing a game. Yeah, that's fun. Um, so I'm, I mean, I lucked out in that regard because, because that, that whole thing has been a discussion this week on Twitter um, because IGN offered 20 bucks for quick news hits and then a scaling pay thing. And people are going ham about, how much work a game journalist does, how much they should be paid, that kind of thing. What do you so, think about that $20 thing? Um, if it's for like a 30 minute, like for when, when I have news on noisy pixel or monster vine, I can write that in like 30 minutes. It's just, you know, you, you take the press uh, release, you read it, you resummarize it, you write it down in your own words. We do. Some people do it even faster by just copy pasting. Kind of pacing. Yeah. But we I, do not copy paste here. In Pixel. So we paraphrase, we yeah. write in a little bit, little snarky, little snarky sentence here and there. Yeah. You know, huh. So this game is looking pretty sweet. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you, if you need to fill more words, you, well, you probably put a video, whether it's a video review or a gameplay trailer, and then you put um, a quote. If the press release is a quote from someone, you put that, yeah, definitely. Like from the director or something. And then if you still need to fill it up a bit, then you say, in our review, we said, and then you put like one sentence or two sentences from the review. Uh, the review. So that takes like once, I mean, uh, the first time you're doing it, it probably won't take 30 minutes. But no. at this point, it takes like 25, 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. I've got distracted. I've, I feel like I've gotten these, um, these down to a science to where I can probably dish out a press release in like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Depending exactly. on if they have, if they have featured images ready. Yeah. That's um, uh, there's, there's a lot of different factors. All the information, all the platforms that it's releasing on is, is nice. Uh, links to the steam page um, links to the press kit of like new, mm -hmm. new screenshots and stuff. So you can say surprised. for more information, check out the steam page and the, button. yeah. So you'd be and surprised how many people don't do that. Yeah. And for 20, like I've worked for very small sites most of my life. So I don't know what the regular pay scale typically is 20 bucks from IGN for like 30 minutes seems low, but it's not like, like I kind of get it. I think, again, I think they could pay more because they're the biggest game site on the internet. 
And I just want to know what they're asking for. Are they asking for 200 words or are they asking like that? They clarified in a, uh, a tweet where it was like, that's a, a straight up just quick news news blast. So I'm assuming that's what that's I think 20, 30 minutes. I think 20 bucks is a, is a lot for that because you just, you, if you are in their little system, uh, you could do as many as you want. It's a, it's essentially like piecework where construction people, um, they get paid for an hour, but if they can finish their job in 20 minutes, they still get paid for that whole hour. Yeah. So it's essentially like you're getting paid $20 an hour. Yeah. Which Which isn't bad. It's not bad for, for what I mean, like I get why people are saying that's crazy because typically a, they either bring up that IGN is the biggest, which is fair or B they bring up that like they might not know it's, it's not super clear what kind of work is the $20. Yeah. 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 So well, I would get, if it's like a feature or a review or something, like if it's a fee, if it's a feature, if it's a feature, I think they should be paying like $60. If yeah, it's like a, if we're, if we're talking like a thousand words, 800 words, mm-hmm. but I generally doesn't do those types of things. Yeah, it's they true. They don't do it's more of a uh, Kotaku GameStop Polygon, yeah. game spot, not game spot. spot. Same thing. Um, yeah, no, I, um, I, I could, so I see both sides. Mm-hmm. I get wanting it to be more because like it probably could be. And I also get that it's not that much work to do for 20 bucks, but, um, yeah, so that's, so for me, um, because I, I'm down to just do that all the time, uh, like writing and work and playing games, because I mean, we've talked about it before. It's kind of work. Like it, it, it is tiring to, Oh, I'm not interested in this game that much, but I got to cover it. So I'm going to play it for 15 hours to get impressions and then write about it. Um, but at the same time, I just really like games and writing about them so I can, it's, it's my favorite work. So I don't mind doing it on weekends and stuff, but, but maybe that's why I'm getting sick and burnt out, uh, mentally. Maybe that's why. <laughs> and uh, honestly, like when I go out of town and stuff, I bring, I have to bring noisy pixel with me. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't, I technically on the website cannot take a vacation and haven't yeah. in three years because um, there is always something to edit. There's always a video to make. Um, it sucks. I'm the only, I'm, if, if people want to know, I'm the only one that, that edits those video reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark, the only videos that Mark edits are Noisy Newsweek and his um, tech reviews, w- however long they do. But every video that goes out is is pretty much touched by me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if I want to take a vacation, I have to always slot in. These next three hours are uh, going to be for editing videos and I will do it on a laptop. It's not the best on a laptop. Um, I have, I have a nice, um, MacBook pro, um, that handles it. It's just, it's just a smaller screen. It kind of sucks. Um, yeah, it's, it, it runs, it runs beautifully, but I just don't like the, the smallness and, and using the, tr- yeah, using the trackpad and stuff. It just, oh, anything with a trackpad is, yeah yeah so i have to, then that means i have to bring a mouse and i have to bring a mic in case i have to do audio and then i have to edit the audio oh, it's just a yeah. whole whole fucking thing um but it gets done and that's all that matters mm-hmm. i've been doing it been doing it for three years now so it's like second nature to me um moral of the story is i just should hire me because if anything, I think those I think those little opportunities like that are a way to get a foot in because before IGN, it's like who you know. Yeah. So if if you're capable of getting a foot in to their little club, um, by all means, try to try to do it that way. My problem with that is that they were looking for entertainment writers, not games writers. They wanted like I movie. thought they were looking for all, but they had a focus. So like it was like entertainment. You say you do both. That's probably handy. It was entertainment, TV, and. Um, superhero is probably something stupid um but whatever whatever good luck to anybody who wants to do that i it's if you can get i would only do it if you can get if you can put those out in like 30 minutes or less though don't Mm -hmm. they are the biggest but i would practice before you like i would learn how to write news before you apply because yeah and write news how they like it written they don't 
they things like they don't like you putting the um the release date in the first sentence they like mm-hmm. it at the end so that people have to go all the way to the bottom to see it um, i'm just realizing how much i took from their writing style over the years yeah <laughs> like how i write news releases is exactly like that what, yeah what, exactly and then they'll tell a little story about the announcement in the first paragraph mm-hmm. so, yeah it's stupid i put it all up front because i try to waste no one's time i write it like a 2010 ign video review mm-hmm. because that's um, all i listened to back in the day with that said spencer yeah. Mm-hmm. This is unqualified game chat. We haven't even given the details yet. <laughs> we record every week, post this to podcast services on Thursdays and, uh, and it goes on all the iTunes and all the uh, Spotify's and uh, podcast services there for you. Yeah. It's a show where you and I talk about um, games. Game, games. game the- adjacent things. Um. I, I know we have something to talk about, but I also did E was E three canceled the last time we talked? I don't think it was. I don't think it was either. Which if, just goes to show how long a fucking week it's been. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. that feels like it was a month ago. Um, how do you how do you how do you take the news? I'm sad because even though E three isn't what it was, I like E three. It's it's fun. It's last year it was kind of weird. Um the whole online app thing. That was not necessary. That didn't do anything. Uh but at the same time, I feel like it's still gonna happen, just it won't be E3. Like Jeff Keeley is doing um he game ign is summer of gaming jeff keely is summer game fest, something fest, else summer fest. yeah summer game fest um and then i'm sure like nintendo will do a direct between june and august and i'm sure sony will do a state of play so i don't think it's really gonna be that different because like there won't be i mean maybe there will still be like digital ubisoft conference like i i I'm I'm slightly concerned, but maybe it's good for the industry that this year it'll basically still happen, and then everyone will go. We don't need E3 because they don't. Um, but that makes me sad because I love going E3 uh, just because it's cool to to it's the it's like the fun. Oh, I have appointments. Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm a game journalist. But um, I so I, I'm I'm sad because of like nostalgia and personal attachment to E3. But at the same time, I don't really think we're going to lose out on anything this year because everything's going to still ha- like I'd be shocked if Nintendo and Sony and stuff didn't still at that time do presentations because like they still have the same amount of stuff to announce, I assume. So, I don't know. Um, where have you ever been to an E3 where the um, public wasn't allowed? Or did, were all your E3 was the memories... first one I went to the one where the public was allowed? I think it might have been. I went the first one. I think was 2017. Mm, I mm, think I went. Mm. Um, and I feel like that was the first. Yeah, I think it was. Which one? Because so, because yeah. my first one was 2015, and I went to two. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. Yeah. And then the third one was the the people. Hmm. We had press badges, so we we said, "Excuse me, press badge alert." Press badges here. Yeah. Um, I will say that the one without the public was a totally different experience in terms of um, just the ongoings of E3 and just the general vibe. You're you're, I mean the the place was still packed with like games GameStop employees and stuff like yeah. that, and Best Buy employees. They all get invited. Mm-hmm. but um but there was a lot of red tape it was more of an event i mean i remember because when i went disney was uh disney was still uh wow. there and uh it was yeah it was it's kind of weird and they had booth babes disney had booth babes that's bizarre that's really weird what was yeah. coming out then like disney infinity yeah it was for infinity they had movies for Disney. Yeah. 
Um, oh, that's some goofy shit. <laughs> I mean, you put a bunch of CEO types in a room. Uh, you, you, they can say whatever they want, like to the public, but they're all, they're all fucking perverts. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, if I bet if a lot of these companies could have it their way, everyone would have booth babes still. I think the last in person E three that happened, I only saw a couple. Yeah, like for some energy drink. Nintendo still has kind of booth babes, or they used to. Oh, um, yeah, they like pranced them around the uh, the show floor, and then uh, they what they took pictures with the Mario, the voice of Mario one year. Like, was that them though, or was that was that? Like no, the, like, the energy drink ones. That, no, it was just girls. It was just just girls in skirts, Ninten- oh. with Nintendo shirts on. Oh, and, and then um, Bandai Namco had had some for one year. Um, I, that makes more sense than than Disney to me. You, but then you go to you go to Tokyo. Uh, yeah, you to go to Tokyo Game Show and booth babes everywhere. Have you ever gone to TGS? No. Oh. I've, uh, I've been i've i've helped writers cover it yeah so i've seen like pictures from the show floor and stuff and then like oh here's booth babes type of thing um everybody has booth babes there though and it's just totally different vibe different cultures yeah yay or nay to booth babes um i don't know because i've never really like when i by the time i joined they were kind of on the way out mm. so i I mean, if, if the people are willing to do that and it, it like suits the thing that they're presenting, I'm sure if they, if they feel that like the, I don't know, I it's, I'm using the, if, if I were to say, yay, it would have to be, I'm saying babes as in boys and girls, yeah. boys, boys yeah, and girls can be babes. Yeah. So, and, and like, if like, I get it for like dead or alive. I don't get it for Disney infinity. <laughs> if it's you gotta, to you, gotta get, you gotta get coverage somehow and nerds seem to uh um nerds seem to gravitate towards the uh the sexy they certainly do yeah even as much as they'd like to not admit it i think nerds are the more likely to admit it of of the uh rather than the disney ceos <laughs> i definitely remember going to anime what is it um anime expo anime expo thank you and uh oh my god the after parties there just a bunch of nerds just grinding on each other and just like it's just the weirdest fucking rave hmm. shit going on these people are all hot and bothered those weebs those weebs wait, they wait all year to just grind on each other <laughs> that's <laughs> at bizarre a, at an after dance um is it bizarre though i guess not it's just strange to think about it's like oh i guess that makes sense I they have all their you their all you hear is all you hear is the keychains those big ba- bunches of keychains on their back yeah. rattling as they're rattling grinding around. on each other <laughs> so it's like oh my god <laughs> That sounds, that sounds like surreal, <laughs> but I can picture that perfectly. Yeah. 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 That makes Glow sense. Sticks. Um, but that's that. Okay. So good night, E3. Rip. I mean, they say they'll be back next year with the whole in-person and online, but we'll see. I'd, yeah. I'd be down, but I also get that they're not nearly as necessary as they were in like 2006. So Anime Expo is way more fun anyway. I wish I wish I was because I counted down the days till I was old enough to go. And I was old enough to go in 2014. Uh, I wish that I could have gone in the Wii days because I wish I could have gone to like the Nintendo conferences where like Reggie would come out on like a Segway or something. And like when Nintendo was like weird, I <laughs> It there's, seems there's like it was definitely a whole different a, vibe. I wish I was there for that. There was definitely a rock star couple yeah. of years where where we made rock stars of people and now we have now and people people enjoyed having fun and now everyone's scared to have fun. So we get more like uh um, We need to look professional. We need to make sure people yeah, know that games are are, get, are professional. 
everybody has to talk about crunch. Like the big thing is like, now we have to always talk, like they have to make sure to touch all these key points. We're a diverse studio. We hire all these people. Trans is trans is here. Uh, we don't do crunch. We don't, I get like, it's good to, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. It's good to be like, yeah, I'm diverse and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, Probably should you just have do it. Too. You probably should have did it before. Before yeah, everyone made it. <laughs> probably should have been doing it a long time. And now you're just patting yourself on the back because you you did the right thing. You probably should have done that thing earlier. But I mean, like, I don't know. I get it, but it feels like the all the weird. It's all feels like you got less weird. The world's yeah. getting less weird. I find. Yeah. Yeah, no one's taking chances. And I like weird. So, uh, what we're going to talk about today is um, our New Legos, year. our Lego Star Wars adventures. Yes. Um, I played it. I reviewed it. Nine out of ten. I'm in the middle of reviewing it. I'm. Uh, I've been playing from the prequels up, and I'm on the midway point of Return of the Jedi. Mm, mm. And I'm having a good time. How surprised were you in Episode One when you got into the pod racer? Oh, I was so excited. I was did, like, did you know that was going to happen? I assumed it would because it did in the, the original Lego star Wars, but it was really fun. I was, was like, this is cool. It was pretty well implemented. It yeah. was, it was, there was a little bit of depth, but not enough. Like you had to like repair the ship and stuff like that. And yeah, I get why they didn't put a ton like that mechanic wouldn't come back at any point. Uh, Cause it's only in the first movie. So yeah. I get it. This isn't episode one pod racing, but it's fun. Yeah. And uh I am I'm just having a grand old time. I'm doing all the things that a uh, long time Lego fan Lego game fans do where it's like I got to save up all my studs for stud multipliers so I can get more studs so that I can buy everything at the end. But I did spend on speed immediately. Yeah. So now I'm very fast. That that helped out a lot, huh? Yeah, it did help out a lot. Because um, you don't you don't notice how slow you are in the beginning of that game. Yeah, and then you get like type three speed or whatever, and you're just blasting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so like it looks really nice too. I love the weathering on like the little your little Lego guys, your mini figs. They they have like weathering effects depending on the the climate like they'll have sand all over them if you're on tatooine or like they'll be like frost it's cool it's yeah. like it's weird i remember seeing this at e3 2019 and seeing that and being like that's really impressive and it felt like what they showed of the game at that point was like done i was so i thought it was going to come out in like 2020 so i don't know what they've been doing but it it worked because i'm gosh i'm having a good time and there's so much to do so many collectibles so much I can only imagine they were working on the not not just the next gen versions, but also making it a little more as cohesive and seamless and as possible. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of things going on throughout the game, especially when you're in the bigger areas. Mm-hmm. That I can be like, there's a lot of planets. Like there's a lot yeah. of settings. Yeah, I can be like, oh, this part is not fun. Let's spend a whole week making this part fun. Yeah, I could see that. Um, how, how, what, what, what to show in the story and what to pass up? I mean, episode one is kind of weird. I felt like there was a scene where he meets everyone, meets Anakin, and then right away you're making yeah. the bet. It all happens in the same scene, and which I get. And, like you have nine movies to put in, typically yeah. like three. So I get it, but yeah. there are parts where it's like, whoa, that's that's fast. At the same time. I also get it because everyone knows you're not, you're not playing Lego star Wars. If you don't, I want to know, know like know the star little, Wars. the little jokes because like Anakin, when he says R2, they spell it a R T O O. Yeah. That's how they spell in the books and stuff too. Whenever they say R2, same with three PO. Really? Yeah. That's uh, like since the nineties, I think, cause I think the Thrawn trilogy, they wrote like R2 and three PO. So I, Yeah. That's just like because people are saying it. Yeah, that's just like I guess it's to make it more like a nickname to like humanize them a bit. So it's like mm. R two instead of like R two. Mm. I think mm. I'm assuming that's what it is. I like mm. it. I think it's charming. It's like oh three PO. That's fun. They, they didn't do the it's working. It's working. They didn't. No, you're right. But they did do the now. This is pod racing. Yeah. 
Yeah. They actually like embrace a lot of the prequel memes I noticed. Like the one level is literally called like the high ground and then Obi-Wan's like on a ladder and he's like I have the high ground. Uh, the, like there was another one where I was like that is actually just the the meme that people do. I don't remember which one it was. I think they put a lot of you'll get to them, but the the final um the final trilogy, mm-hmm. uh they seem to have put a lot more time into those ones for some reason. They're maybe I have a theory. They're a lot they put out the Lego of the Force Awakens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that this was gonna be just Last Jedi, Force Awakens, and Rise of Skywalker, and then they were like we might not get another chance to do star Wars. So then mm-hmm. they're like, let's do more. That's my theory. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's, they're, they're just a lot longer, a lot longer. Um, and, and Cause the prequels are really short. Yeah. Prequels. They're, they're you like go, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Except for, uh, what's the third one called? Revenge of the Sith. That makes Revenge. sense. That's the one everyone likes the most. So yeah, that's, that one's kind of, that one's kind of long. Yeah. Um, but you can, like get, you can lot, get through there weren't many levels either, either. This is this is a game that you can get through the story campaign pretty quickly if you don't pay attention to anything else. But it's hard not to because there's a lot of shit everywhere and you're like, yeah. I can do that quick. I can yeah. do that quick. Yeah. It's, it's uh, cool. I didn't like all the characters. I didn't like playing as all the characters. Mace Windu is pretty fun to play as because he like jumps around and does like Yeah, he does like different flips. Like everyone does different flips and shit. I like that. Yeah. That's there's yeah. a lot of detail. There's there's cool there's cool moments like that. It's all around though. I I I think it's one of my favorite games to just get lost in. And you know what? I I I'm about I'm really close to a platinum in Ghostwire Tokyo. There's a couple of annoying uh, trophies. Did you get the fortune one yet? Which that one took me two and a half hours? No, I, no, no. Is that finding all the shitty fortune and you just save in front of it? Pull the fortune, reload. Pull the fortune. No, reload. no, I didn't. I didn't because I didn't. I didn't do that hack. I didn't do that. Uh, there was. Uh, but that now I know two and a half hours. I do not have that trophy, so now I know. You have a roughly one percent chance of getting that the one uh, fortune that you want. So I actually that was like my least favorite mini game to use, our least favorite feature to use in the game. And aside from collecting spirits and taking them to the fucking. Uh, phone all the time when you beat the game you get a wristband that lets you yeah it lets you do it so cool yeah thank thank god for that dude it's uh it's and and they don't tell you that though yeah but you kind of want to do the spirits early on because you want to be as high level as you can because some early bosses fuck you up pretty first couple bosses are pretty tough after that like Maybe it's because I did all the side content, like it was pretty easy. But yeah, if you did all the side content and got all the spirits and got all the experience, uh, mm-hmm. you're you're gonna be pretty chill. You at that point, you could just up the difficulty. And I want to plat it, but like I went out of my way to get spirits the whole game, and I finished with like half. Yeah, how long would that take? Like, but there's different ways to get spirits. Yeah, there's the lit. cubes. There's the marching. There's the... <laughs> a lot of yeah. Um, so I mean. I'll yeah, probably go back and do it when I have time. I'm, I think I think I'm about a little over half of the spirits. And well, anyway, my point is is that it was a game that I liked getting lost in. And similar to that with this Star Wars game, after you mm-hmm. complete it, there is so much to do. There is. It's because once and, and then once you unlock free play, you can choose your characters and who you want to bring into these areas to get more characters, to unlock new ships, to unlock new upgrades. And um, you can be anyone and go anywhere. It's just a fun, it's just a pretty fun game. I love, I've always loved Lego games. They're just the most, to go back to my previous point of like, I can play work games on the weekend. I could especially play Lego games because they're the unwind games for me. It's like, I don't have to think about Lego puzzles. I don't have to, I don't have to put work into, Mm -hmm. into like playing it. It's like, oh, it's, it's, you can sit back a property I like, whether it's star Wars or Marvel or whatever. And I can just go run around and find stuff. And there's enough collectibles that I constantly have that little dopamine loop where I'm like, I got something that I've accomplished something. I've accomplished something. It's a, it's it's a good formula. And this one upgraded the formula in a lot of ways. So I'm planning that my review out on Friday on monster mine. Um, But I'm uh, having a blast. I'm Hmm. loving it. I think uh, listeners would like to know that I am currently going back to my roots 
And uh, my next game to review is going to be a hentai game. Oh my. Mm, That's mm, saucy. Mm. Cafe Stella and the Reapers of Butterflies is what I'm going to be. Uh, Can't wait reading. to awkwardly read that one. Yep. There you go. There you go. You can hear in some of the reviews I read, you can hear me laugh a little bit sometimes. I will. Um, I would love to get as ridiculous as possible just to hear you say. You can. But. I cut some takes where I, where, cause I, I try not to read it beforehand other than, unless I edited it. Um, I'll, just, I'll just i'll just go in full detail for the sister routes i just oh, go do that don't do that i can't do that I, i'll read it and it'll be like and you have to make them feel better by having sex with them <laughs> i'll be like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> so look out for that review i'm excited to just play a visual novel to be honest with you because i've been playing these huge ass games i think lozy mentioned it in my star wars comment it's like, cause I was playing all these triple A games and he's right because no one else on staff wants to freaking play the normie games. That's what, that's the, the curated weeb staff. That's the side effect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, that's our show. Yep, that's it. And uh, we'll see, we'll see you all next week and let us know what you're doing in the comments below and we'll be around Spencer sometimes there. Yeah. I'm there sometimes. Sometimes I, uh, Basically, if you say my name, I appear and I go, hey. And then he just disappears. I just, yeah, and then I'll check again tomorrow. <laughs> Never does. I do. I do sometimes. And typically, yeah. typically, we get comments on a qualified game chat for three to four days. Mm. After that, mm. I don't check because I'm like, no one's going to be like, oh, about your points, Spencer. <laughs> like, I want. <laughs> Noisy pixel.